You're watching the COP TV, the voice of football's most famous stand. Yes, good afternoon. Welcome back to the COP TV, the voice of football's most famous stand. I hope you're doing well. Welcome back, by the way, to On The Radar, uh, your almost daily transfer news show on the COP TV. We see who is on Liverpool's radar, who we're looking to bring in. Also, people uh, leaving, as we know, as well this season. But get your comments in. How are you guys reacting to this news of Kone Turam? And as we know, McAllister, that deal looking like it's around 95% done. But I wanted to get your opinions on the potential new midfield that Liverpool could have next season, knowing that a lot of midfielders and players in general will be leaving as well. If you haven't watched Hot Copics from yesterday, we did a full in-depth season review. So make sure you go and watch that. Um, but at the minute, I'm going to share my screen with you and we're going to look at some news that kind of came about last night. There was a lot of um, transfer news last night, which was great to see, really, um, in terms of the, the new sporting director um, getting to work already. So here's the first one that we saw yesterday. Sports build, as we know, very reputable, uh, reputable um, journalistic house um, that comes out with a lot of the truth. Um, and they were reporting yesterday that apparently Jurgen Klopp has uh, himself contacted Manu Kone's representatives and Liverpool's interest is real and big. And Liverpool have made contact with Borussia Mönchengladbach, a team that Liverpool have a lot of history with, dating back to that European final uh, in the 70s to discuss a transfer fee. This is Kone. Um, there he is playing for, for Gladbach. And again, a lot of... Uh, a lot of people are looking happy about this. Bring him in, please. Um, as we know, he's a box-to-box -box midfielder. You guys will have probably watched... I uh, don't know what that's about. But you guys probably would have watched um, bits and bobs from him last season. Um, and obviously this season, knowing that we're in for him as well. Um, but it was Christian Folk uh, yesterday. And I'll show you the tweet that he did yesterday. Um, it was Christian Folk on Twitter that said the following. True, Liverpool have started transfer talks with the management of Manu Kone of Borussia Mönchengladbach. He could be the alternative for Jude Bellingham. Um, again, how much do... <clears throat> How much do Liverpool need a midfielder? Absolutely very much so, as we know. Um, could we also get Turam? You know, if you type his name into Twitter, a lot of things linking him with Liverpool, which is great to see. Uh, I'd have to think, of, I'd have to go on my own Twitter there to, to actually get it. But yeah, Sports Build writing that news that Liverpool are looking to, to get Kone and Turam, right? And Kone, as we know, box to box, number eight, I'd say. Um, I saw a bit of... Uh, bits and bobs of him over the last couple. Well, I saw a little bit of him last season. I think it was either him or or um, or Chouamani, who obviously ended up going to Real Madrid. But from what I've seen of Kone, he looks to me almost uh, like a, a second Ginny Wijnaldum in terms of being a ball carrier, extremely strong on the ball, likes a, a bit of a laugh and a joke as well, which I, I think we, we need in the dressing room, a um, bit of lightheartedness. But he essentially would come in to replace Naby Keita in that number eight midfield role. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing him potentially in a Liverpool shirt. Let me know how you uh, think of that one. Um, and obviously there's Taram as well, who we're, we're obviously aware of. Um, and can he come through the door as, as well for Liverpool, making almost a new midfield entirely? Um, looking at Taram, let's go on to him. Obviously the Nice player. Um, he's also a nice player, pardon the pun. But if we see here, this is this is Anfield. Uh, definitely interested in Kefran Turam. Could be hard to resist. This was today, written by Adam Beatty. And he says, the 22-year-old has attracted plenty of attention after impressing throughout his league last season. And the Reds are said to be one of the clubs monitoring his situation. Of course, as we know, the Turam family very renowned, especially in French football. Lilian Turam, the defender, won the World Cup with Spain, uh, Spain, France in 98. And it almost seems as if we're going for players here whose dads were were good players as well, with the likes of Bejetic, um 
who's obviously been around for a while, but we're looking at Taram and Kone as well. Um, Neil Jones, as we know, uh, about to leave goal, actually. I'm not too sure where he's going on from there, but he says there's definitely interest in the midfielder from a Liverpool uh, perspective, despite the rumours uh, previously being played down by the club. Um, Taram's profile makes him uh, a more than interesting proposition and it could be hard to resist, given Liverpool's the physical deficiencies in the last season, his energy and composure in tight areas are al- among the attributes that are likely to have grabbed Liverpool's attention with Fabinho's age and form, prompting calls for a more in-depth uh, in that area of the pitch. And in the Telegraph, we know that uh, in March, Turan was aware of the interest from Liverpool. So this isn't something that, because of the, the new sporting director, we're just going to jump on straight away. This is something that we've been looking at for a month or two, as you can see from March. But as we know, we've been looking at the likes of Alexis McAllister, who should be confirmed in the next week or so, I'm believing. Uh, we've looked at Mason Mount. We've looked at Mateus Nunez. But out of nowhere, really, from what it seems, obviously not inside the club, but from out of nowhere in terms of being outside of the club and looking in, it looks that like Horg Schmadke uh, has definitely laid down his targets and he will be working very closely with Jurgen Klopp. This isn't all down to Horg. This is him and Klopp working in conjunction to be getting on the phones and getting the players in the door. Jurgen Klopp is going to have a very um, intense summer. And it's good to see, isn't it, um, this early in the window, before it's even opened, really, um, that we're looking to be active and, and nail down our targets earlier on in the window rather than later on as well. So there he is. There is um, Kefram Turam. Again, what we've seen of him, fairly similar to Kone in terms of his profile, the way that he plays. Um, very good at winning the ball back. I saw some percentages that that are really good. Um, and, and they also look to be some of the best in the French League in terms of winning the ball back, high up the pitch, um, possession, regaining possession. So... Um, of course, we need to be proactive in the market. And I think this is a, a good start, really, if you are to believe what we've been reading in the last day or two about new players coming into Liverpool. Could we have a whole new midfield with the likes of Kone, Turam and McAllister as well? Obviously, McAllister's dad was a very good footballer as well. So it's almost as if Liverpool are buying players whose dads seem to have illustrious careers as well, which is what we like to see 100%. Massive shout out to everyone who's still with us. Uh, we had a bit of an internet issue in the last one. Big up to Sharky and Ali A and Ravi, as always. Remember, we're going to be doing a lot of these videos on the radar. If you've been a Cop TV fan from, from the start, you'll know that On the Radar is a, is a very important show to us here at the channel. And we like to make sure that we're giving you the information in bite-sized chunks as often as possible. So make sure that you like that video throughout the summer. We'll be giving you all of these videos for free as well, by the way. So if you can send in a super chat, make sure you do, just like Jen has here. Honestly, the amount of super chats Jen has given, I feel like I owe Jen a drink. Um, but she is one of, if not the best fan that we've had on the Cop TV. So a massive shout out to Jen. And if you guys do want to support us that little bit more, as well as liking the video, commenting and subscribing, because all those three things do help, then make sure if you can, if you can afford it, do send in a super chat, because again, it goes straight back into the channel to make more content for you guys. So be more like Jen, please. Um, the new sporting director wants Kone because of his German links. Obviously, he's seen him play a lot in Borussia Mönchengladbach. He'll have that inside knowledge to what he's like as a person. How will he um, fit in in the Liverpool dressing room? Because one of the main things, guys, when we're buying players, excuse my French, but there's no room for idiots. Um, there's no room for ego maniacs. There's no room for um, bad eggs in the change room, especially when we're looking to rebuild. So as much as how good they are on the pitch, we'll also be looking at how they come across as a person. Are they good guys? Do you think that um, they will be able to settle in in that dressing room nice and easy as the rest of the guys have that we've bought. Look at the long list of amazing recruitment that Liverpool have done in the past. You look at um, Mane, Salah, Firmino, Fabinho, Alisson. I don't think we've seen any bad eggs. I mean, Naby Keito was harmless as a person, really nice guy, but on the pitch, it just was the time to move on. Um, so I do feel like we we often sign the right players from 
a football standpoint and also a human standpoint as well. And that's very important to Jurgen Klopp. Let's get it done, please. Again, Captain Sal wanting these uh, transfers to happen. Manu Kone, um, Alexis McAllister and, of course, as we know, Kefram Turam, who all come from great footballing stock. As we know, uh, I'm going to show this article from The Echo now, one of the uh, most reliable newspapers in Liverpool. If you didn't know, get to know about the Liverpool Echo. It is famous for good and bad reasons, really, in the city. Um, but it's still something that we definitely um, pay attention to. So as we know, uh, this morning, the well, less than 50 minutes ago, the Echo are saying that McAllister is still the priority um, and Liverpool are now lining up their targets as Hjorg uh, Skamtek uh, uh, gets busy. And he'll be probably still thumbing through his new starter pack as Liverpool employee when the transfer links began to rage on Tuesday. It's now Wednesday, so this is me rounding up what's happened just a few hours after the club had announced that he'll be taken over from Julian Ward as the new sporting director from June the 1st, which is tomorrow, by the way. The speculation started to spread from all over Europe and beyond Um we, as we know, we we know uh, that McAllister has agreed to join Liverpool, according to Football Insider. The outlet says there have been a breakthrough in talks, which now see the Argentine on the verge of a 60 million move to Anfield, which I think is a good price. You know, knowing that he's a World Cup winner, Premier League experience for the last two years, he's a midfielder that can take free kicks, penalties. He's a midfielder that can score you over 10 goals in the Premier League, as we've seen from him this season. And um, I'm over the moon with £1,000 a week, which I don't think in the current market is too extortionate. Um, so, yeah, he is the priority. But can we add a couple other midfield names to that? We're looking, of course, at Manu Kone and, of course, Kefram Turam as well. Um, let me know what you think to all of that news in the comments, guys. Another super chat coming in from Silvio. Love to see it. Thank you very much for the super chat. He says, AGT is getting all three, Kone, Turam and McAllister, realistic this season. Love the channel, bud. Love you for loving the channel, mate. Big up to you, my friend. Um, listen, if we can get all of them for around the, the 150 mark for, for, for all three of them, then I would say we're laughing. Let's not forget, Turam was definitely an option that we were looking at last season when we were in for Turamani. He obviously chose Madrid, won the Champions League against Liverpool in the final, which was hard to see. Um, but I think that is realistic because they're not necessarily the Jude Bellinghams. Um, they're not necessarily the, the Mason Mounts, but they're definitely three midfielders that we've been keeping a keen eye on. Of course, we know McAllister is, is agreed and he's looking like he's going to rock up any day soon. The transfer window officially opens on June the 14th, by the way. But Kone and Taram, I would be happy. I would be happy with all three of those because that is a whole new midfield to, to add in to the likes of Henderson, Fabinho, Curtis Jones. Um, you've got Thiago still there at the club as well. But knowing that, Fab, uh, sorry, um, Cater and, and Milner are now gone, you need two to three bodies to come in to, to be those backups, if not starters. And knowing as well that now Liverpool are going to be in the Europa League, perfect time to really pack out um, that midfield have as many options as you possibly can going into four competitions again and there's more games guys in the Europa League than there is in the Champions League there's a round of 32 there's a round of 16 there's uh, then quarterfinals semis and finals but of course you've got to get out your group first we'll be interested to know who's going to be in Liverpool's group for the Europa League we'll definitely be doing a live stream uh, for when that happens but I do think it, in answer to your question and it is a great question Silvio I do think it is realistic but again, let me know in the comments. Um, I would take all those three over Jude AGT. <coughs> We're also hearing with Jude as well, and this is something that is, isn't good news at all for him, let alone Liverpool, but or any club that's trying to buy Jude Bellingham. But there are talks around his knee. Now, we heard yesterday that he may... We heard yesterday that he may need knee surgery at the age of 19, which is never a good thing. We obviously know that he missed out on the final day of the season for Dortmund and um, couldn't be on the pitch to put them over the line and win the league. Obviously choked massively and gave it to, to Bayern Munich in the last second. But do you really necessarily want someone that's 19 looking at knee surgery? I would say no. But again, there is um, slight concerns over Kone's injury record if we're being honest um i'm going to look up now because again i heard uh stuff about this but let's let's get it fact checked uh transfer market one of the easiest and, and most 
uh, reputable football websites when it comes to stats and, and stuff like that. Let's, uh, let's have a little look at Manu Kone's injury record. Um, as you can see, since he started playing in, in the, the COVID season, really, he has been out for some time in this season. We've we've seen muscular problems is something that he's currently um, struggling with now. He's missed one game there. He had a thigh muscle strain back in April. Uh, and then, of course, he missed a, a good month due to a knock last season and he had a bruise. So although he has had technically, what, four injuries this season, these ones, muscular thigh, bruise and a knock, it's not bad at all. And when you consider the likes of the other players that we've got that have been out for a long time, Nabi Keita, etc., then I wouldn't necessarily say that this is as bad as people think. Let's have a look at Turam as well. Let's get him up. Uh, of course, it's not Lilian, it's not Marcus, it is Kefram. How many Turams are playing right now? And this guy, 22 years old, France international, one cap for them, two goals and four assists in the season. Obviously not what we're buying him for, um, but where we need him in this position, the defensive midfield, the central midfield position, this is where we need to tighten up. Tall as well, 192 centimetres, was born in Italy, um, but obviously his citizenship is France and it's Guadalupe as well, which is interesting to know. But um, right-footed player, uh, currently out of contract in two years from now. And as we know, he was part of the Monaco youth team. And then for only £500,000 in 2019, he goes to Nice and has really done well since then. Um, played in the Conference League, so he's got that European experience as well. Three goals in 10 games there. 35 games in Liga, which is definitely what you want to see. Only missing out three games over 2,500 minutes um, in the season, which again is positive knowing that He's got that experience both domestically and Europe as well. But I don't think it's that worrying. Uh, let's get into a few more comments. This will make us very physical. 100% it will, Craig. Shout out to you. Let's get it done. Um, great stream. Thank you very much, Sam. Really appreciate it. Jen is ace, as we know. Bless AGT. Bless you, Jen. Um, Agent Ibu Kanate. Has Ibu been on the phone? Has he been on the WhatsApps to old uh, Kone and Turam? He must have relationships with them both. Um, they won't uh, because alt uh, alternatives because McAllister is 95% done as we know as I've said in the title as well um, Turam, Kone, McAllister would be a great summer I don't think that would be it though guys I do think Liverpool would maybe look to strengthen defensively as well um, we've heard rumours of Trent moving into the midfield permanently next season. So do you go and buy a right back or do you trust in what you've already got in the Connor Bradleys, the Calvin Ramseys as well? So we could end up with three. We could end up with four. We could end up with five players coming in. I don't think Liverpool are necessarily looking at uh, knowing that Diaz, Jota, Nunes, Salah and Gakpo are all there ready to fire next season. I think five is probably enough. Obviously, we had six forwards last season, but I am pretty sure that Liverpool don't buy a forward this season. I'm pretty sure, knowing that Adriana signed a new deal and Kelleher is now staying, that we don't sign a goalkeeper. The only question then is, do you go and get a defender or maybe a, a, a backup forward? But again, Ben Doak coming through this season, I can't see it. Um, so let me know, 10-10 window if we sign McAllister, Kone and Turam and Gonzalo Inacio from Benfica as well. Um, big up to Albert. First time seeing this name on the channel. Always like to see new names on the channel. We love to see it. Hey, get Alexis Taram and Manu Konen. All is forgiven. All the crap we've been through is forgiven. Interesting opinion. Alexis is the best transfer story this summer. Uh, June the 14th, it officially opens. Fabrizio said it will be less than 70, which is also good. Um... A man says still six out of 10 window because we need a centre back or two. Again, another position that Liverpool are looking at. Um, at as things stand, there's uh, Virgil van Dijk, Canate, Matip, Joe Gomez, and Nat Phillips at the centre back position. Do we move on a Joe Gomez? Do we move on a Nat Phillips and then bring in another backup as well? Let me know. LFC Aaron also saying that we need two defenders in his opinion as well. Um, McAllister, Turam, Kone would be around 160 million. Along with Thiago Jones, our midfield would be a great summer. Don't forget Fabinho as well in that midfield, the captain Henderson. 
um, as well. So again, you're going to need a bigger squad than you had before when you're in the Europa League. We know that. Gravenberg as well, we've been linked with him. But if we're buying Kone and Taram, I can't see us getting him at all. Just took out my trash and now iPhone popped up. Notification about this. Shout out to Tim. He's always watching. We need defenders. Um Unless you finish first, you don't play round of 32. Let's finish first then. Shout out to Alie for reminding me there. I don't think, says uh, Thel Siedi, a uh, great name. I don't think we'll get Kone and Turan. Realistically, we'll get one of the two. Um, I think if we avoid a round after finishing fifth, yeah. Um, thankfully, Klopp. And also, guys, we've got Bechetic as well, who's going to have a massive season next year. So actually... Actually, how many midfielders do we need here? Um, I would say two or three, no more than three. Um, massive shout out to Frank Carlisle. Um, I sent you a message on Instagram the other day, Frank. Have a little listen to that when you get a minute. I'd love them in midfield. Unfortunately, it's wishful thinking with these owners of ours. Um, Joe, I'm wrong. Alex, keep uh, your great cop TV going. Thank you, Frank. And if you want to see a bit more of Frank Carlisle, make sure you check out the Scouse Not English documentary on YouTube, he's, he's a big uh, face in that. So make sure you have a look at that as well. Shout out to Frank. Uh, for me, Turan McAllister should be a must. Uh, it's not that bad, says LFC Aaron. Uh, forget Jude, get Turan, Kone and McAllister. I'd rather have them three over Jude anyway. Shout out, as always, to Ant Dicko for, for hoping I'm well and Gus as well. He's actually asleep right now. Um, so shout out to uh, to man like Ant Dicko top scouser where's the main man Gus um, he's currently asleep you know what they say never wake up a, a sleeping dog um, so I can't do that Agent Ibo would be on the phone to both um, Jude's been playing uh, since 16 four seasons three at the top burnout is a worry for him and Real Madrid does this actually make Real Madrid step back and go well if he's having a knee operation at the age of 19 do we actually want him I actually think guys and I could be wrong, obviously, but I actually, in my opinion, think he stays at Borussia Dortmund for another season. That's my opinion. Um, if we bring three midfielders in and two defenders, that would be fantastic. Again, stacked up front. So do we need any more up there? I'd say no. Um, but at the same time, two defenders, maybe one at maximum, maybe a backup centre-back and three midfielders. I would be happy with that. I would be over the moon with that because it shows you know, that we've realised where our weakest link is in terms of last season. How many times do we get run through by uh, the likes of Wolves, Brighton, Brentford in midfield too many times? So knowing that we need to address that issue and, and it looks like we're doing that at some speed as well is great to know. Um, and the two defenders would be great as well. Um, as we know too. Uh, Ibu is Schmacke's wingman. We love to see that. Big up to Ibu and his uh, contribution at Liverpool so far. Kone Turaman uh, for Liverpool says Borneo 85. We need left-footed players in our team. Interesting uh, from Maximo. Um, I'd be worried about muscular injuries seem to be a problem with us last few years as well. As we know, we've had a lot of muscular injuries that just aren't good enough, really. Or it's not necessarily not good enough, but how many can we have in a season, guys? Um, centre back as well. We also want Timba and Inacio. Benjamin Pavard, we've been linked with him at right back, by the way. Kind of came into everyone's thinking in the World Cup of 2018. Um, was obviously very good for, for Bayern Munich as well. But Benjamin Pavard, is that a name that interests you? at right back. And does that then mean that Trent pops himself into the midfield if we do go in for Pavard in a serious way? Mm. Choose two between the following, Kone, Tram and Gravenbach. Oh, it's a good question. It's a good question. Me personally, it would be Kone and Gravenbach. But if we are to believe that we're in for both Kone and Turam, then I'd prefer them to instead of Gavin, but knowing that we've also got Alexis McAllister as well. LFC Aaron saying I'd get rid of Gomez and Matip. Um, Gakpo is going to be unreal next season. Guys, last season he played 50 games in all comps for PSV and Liverpool. He got 20 goals and 20 assists. That's 0 0.8 in terms of goals or assists per game, by the way. Unbelievable from him. I can't wait to see him. Did you see Colwell said he loved Gerrard as an idol? Yeah. But who didn't, Ant? How many times have we heard that one before and they still don't come? Jude Bellingham has said openly that Stevie G uh, was his favourite player. But it doesn't mean that they're going to sign. But yeah, my player was Stevie G when I was growing up. But it doesn't mean I'm going to sign either. 
uh, unfortunately. Uh, we need three mids and another right back. It's great to get your guys' opinions. Tell us right now what you think Liverpool need. Uh, we need a centre-back and a right-back as well. Um, Albert, Bin, Jude's knee. Get me the other three, says Captain uh, Uncle Albert. Little uh, reference there to Only Fools and Horses, which I absolutely love from you guys. Kunde as well, we've been linked with him. He can play at centre-back and at right-back and has done for Barcelona this season. Kunde is uh, unrealistic, says Sean. Tally ho, Alex. Shout out to Gary Richards each and every time as well. We have to act quickly in the market and get the deals done. Again, it seems like we are, though, Jen, right? As I said, we've still got two weeks until, yeah, two weeks today until the the window officially opens. Um, and it looks like already that we are looking to uh, to jump on uh, fairly early in the transfer window, which is great and isn't really Liverpool style. But I think knowing that there's a big preseason to come, knowing that we've got to get deals done, this could be the one for us, which we love. Um, yeah, I spoke about this yesterday on Hot Copics. Big up to Phil. Make sure you go back and watch Hot Copics with myself, Mario and Rory yesterday. We speak about Carvalho, but I don't want him to go um, permanently. I don't want to see that, um, especially knowing that Europa League is going to throw up some opportunities for him next season. I'd, I'd keep him, maybe loan him at worst, but definitely not a permanent transfer. But again, there must have been something that's gone on behind the doors that we don't know about. So that's down to Jurgen Klopp, how he deals with that. And we obviously trust him. I love Ruben Neves. I really love him. And if we were in for him, I'd have him above the likes of Taram and Kone. Because again, Premier League proven, that costs money. This is a massive, massive box that players can tick and it saves you kind of bedding players in, getting them up to scratch and up to speed with the Premier League. Someone like Ruben Evers walks straight into our midfield, in my opinion, anyway. Um, uh, would rather have Caicedo than Turam or Kone, but if we're looking at players in the 40 to 50 mil range, then Turam and Kone are the best options. They're saying the ice yeti. Uh, shout out to Michael Ramsey with the super chat. Good. Anybody but Mount. I, I've been saying the same thing, mate. I agree with you. I, I definitely wouldn't have Mason Mount at the club. Um, and I do think I'd rather go abroad and bring someone in than spend 80 million on Mason Mount for me. Not for me. Um, I hope they feel more hungry to win this season. Turam, Kone and Trent in midfield is dynamite with a 3-4-3 formation. Everyone's starting to think now where Kone and Turam fit in to Liverpool's midfield. Um, massive shout out again to Frank, as always. Uh, Bellingham would be finished at 23 in our midfield. Wow, yeah. I mean, burnout for the young boy. It's not something to laugh at at all. But if he does need knee surgery, then maybe it's one that we avoid. But yeah, two France flags and uh, an Argentina flag, which would represent the three players that we're interested in looking at now. Uh, my mum has just had a full knee op. Won't be fully recovered for 18 months, properly walking. And my dad as well. My dad's just had a knee op. Um, to be fair, he just didn't listen to any of the doctors. He's been swimming, flying around. So... He hasn't listened. But again, yep, those things take time, man. Trust me, you can't just walk back into a team after a knee operation. That takes a good year to 18 months. as Ant And if Jude is going to be out for that long, if he does, in fact, need this knee operation, such a shame for him, man. Um, no to Pavard. Kunde says Kayanta. Pavard isn't going to work with our system. Um, I think Pavard is now too old for us. Usual players that we buy. Uh, and Pavard actually wants to play in centre mid now. Um, sorry, central defence, as Albert here says. A lot of centre backs can play right back, can't they? Um, I think Pavard would be very good depending on the price, as he is very versatile. Again, do you get a Kunde or a, or a Pavard when you've got a Joe Gomez? Again, don't shoot me down. I'm just asking the question. I want to hear your thoughts on that. 95% like Bellingham and Chirmani. This one is 95%. Trust me, the the Jude um, and Chirmani was never 95% from what I know anyway. Um, hearing Stevie G is heading to Leeds as the new manager. Could happen in the championship. Who knows? I hope we get done our transfers before August. Me too, Rosie. It's absolutely imperative that we look to get everything done, even by July, if I'm honest. Um, AGT, you can't play to save your life. We won't even sign you in the women's team. It's a bit harsh. Have you seen me play? I was man of the match at Anfield three weeks ago, mate. Relax yourself. All right. Uh, if Gerard does go to Leeds, it would be a better experience for him. Three mids, uh, says Ant Dicko. But Brandon says three mids and an Ake-like player can play left back and centre back in the three would be good. Um, a couple more comments. Three mids and a CB and an RB. See, this is what I'm up to. 
I'm saying three mids, a centre back, and a right back for me as well. I'm totally on the same page there as Frank. No to Ruben Never says Ali A. Um, who mentioned Mount? Everyone has mentioned Mount in the last month or two. Um, uh, Neves lacks the the mobility and pressing for us. Um, says uh, W D Red, and Alex quipped, <laughs> "Why buy a book when you can join the library?" Is that how FSG have been treating us? Is it brilliant? Um, Kone Turam Mac and a centre back, probably a backup right back, and we are cooking. Says Sultan. Jacob Ramsey again, very good player, but he's a he's a Villa boy, so he won't believe in there. Pavard was a top player, says Alejandro, uh, but he's not too bad. If we're going to get him on a free and utilize him, him as a centre back, then maybe yes, and keep Mount well away from us. Well, guys, every on the radar show will be around uh, this time, half an hour. So just to round it up for you before we leave, Kone from Nice. Uh, sorry, Kone from uh, Munch and Gladbach. We're looking in for him. Are you happy with that signing? Box to box midfielder, central defensive as well. Uh, definitely a player that we need, as well as Turam. Fairly similar, but we'll we'll do a little bit more in terms of ball carrying. Um, again, all these rumours came out of uh, the woodwork yesterday after we've uh, obviously brought in the new sporting director. How happy would you be with all three of these names? Alexis McAllister, ninety five percent done. We're hearing Turam. And Kone, how happy would you be if we brought all three of those midfielders into Liverpool, basically giving us a totally new midfield to choose from, giving us so many options going into the Europa League next season as well. Uh, just kidding, AGT, I greeted you at Anfield a few weeks ago. You could actually have been a great centre-back. You're a lot taller than TV gives you credit for. Shout out to you, Albert. Um, love to see it. Second part of the Annie Road off soon. Yep. We spoke about that in the podcast yesterday as well. They are very good. As you know, go away and look at them, Vlad. Uh, shout out to you for the comment. Um, Kim Min Jae is the best centre-back on the market at the minute. He's just dumped his agent and he's looking for, for someone else, apparently. Uh, we're hearing that Chelsea could be in for Ugarte as well. We've been linked with him. Uh, the coding signing, Kone signing would be very good with McAllister, says Nelson. Guys, there you go. On the radar, as I said, this will be uh, a show that we do all across the transfer window from June to September. Um, but if we've done all of our business in July and we're definitely not getting anyone else, then maybe it won't be going on until September. But hopefully, as Liverpool fans sitting here right now, we want three things right this season. We want to make sure we get the right players in. We want to make sure we get them in early enough so that we can bed them in, give them a full preseason, and we want to be going into the new season with absolutely no excuses, no holes left to fill. And we need to go into the season hoping to be in the top two at least and win a trophy. That's what we need. That's the minimum expectations for Liverpool next season. So, June the 14th, the window opens. Will we be buying McAllister, Turam and Kone? It's all on the radar for Liverpool. Uh, and again, as soon as there's more news, of course, we will let you know. But for me today... Until something else happens, and I might be back on later, this has been On The Radar. You've been watching The Cop TV. Please, 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 because we don't do this for a laugh, smash that like button. It's around here. Please do it. Please do it. I'm not asking you again. And subscribe. Look at my face. I'm getting sad. Subscribe if you haven't already. Guys, I want to get to 32K ASAP, so make sure you do that. If you haven't subscribed already, just press it. Massive shout out to everyone who sent in Super Chats, Jen, Silvio, and Michael as well. Um, and yeah, uh, unless something else happens, I will be back as soon as possible with more news. But until then, take care and go and look at some comps of Kone, Turam, and McAllister to get you in the mood for what promises to be, and it has to be, a massive summer for Liverpool. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Cop TV.